And the Grammy goes to. We're supposed to pull this little tab Here like that. Go. Here we go. Living on the edge. Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Steven Tyler is an American singer, songwriter, actor, and former television music competition judge. He is best known as the lead vocalist of the Boston-based rock band Aerosmith, which was formed in 1970. Throughout his career, Tyler has been considered one of the most prominent figures in the rock music industry and has been widely regarded as one of the greatest singers in the history of rock music. His unique and powerful vocal style, characterized by his distinctive falsetto, has been a major influence on the music of countless artists. In addition to his work with Aerosmith, Tyler has also had a successful solo career, releasing several albums and collaborating with a wide variety of other artists. He has also dabbled in acting, appearing in films and television shows such as Wayne's World 2 and Two and a Half Men. As the frontman of Aerosmith, Tyler has helped the band become one of the most successful and enduring rock bands of all time. They have sold over 150 million records worldwide, earning them the nickname The Bad Boys from Boston and the title America's Greatest Rock and Roll Band. The band has won numerous awards and accolades, including four Grammy Awards and six American Music Awards. Tyler is also known for his philanthropic work, particularly in support of various charities benefiting children and veterans. It can be argued that Steven Tyler is one of the most iconic and influential artists of all time. However, with allegations now emerging about his past, his reputation may now be in peril. Hey, what is up, you guys? It's Dustin, and I'm back with another video. Now, if you grew up in the 70s, 80s, or 90s, you know Aerosmith, and you know their frontman, Steven Tyler. With hits like Crying, which featured the iconic Alicia Silverstone, Walk This Way, and I Don't Want to Miss a Thing, which was in one of my all-time favorite movies, Armageddon. There was always an Aerosmith song on the radio or in a movie. Aerosmith was a big deal. Now, I've heard the allegations that we're going to be talking about in this video some time ago, but I don't really remember where. I just feel like I heard it like a very long time ago, actually. And I really had always wondered why people had not talked about this. But with many celebrities of the yesteryears being called out like Harvey Weinstein, R. Kelly, and Bill Cosby, we know eventually what is done in darkness eventually does come to light. And Steven Tyler is really no exception to this. Now, I do just want to give a little bit of a warning about this video. We're going to be talking about some things that could be triggering to some people. So be mindful of what you're about to watch and what you're going to consume because this gets dark really quickly. Now, as you may have seen in this intro, Steven Tyler has been an A-list celebrity for quite some time, literally decades at this point. And like I've said before, everything that glitters isn't gold, especially when it comes to the Hollywood elite and all of their like messy business behind the scenes. So let me now introduce you to Julia Holcomb. She goes by Julia Misley now, and she met Steven Tyler in 1973 at the very young age of 16. She literally just turned 16 right before meeting Steven Tyler. And she met him at an Aerosmith concert in Portland, Oregon, a chance meeting that would literally change her life forever. And this young woman that you met, what uh, did she lead you into rock and roll or something or what she the... sure did uh, she was she was older than i was and she told you, me that you were 15 at the time i was 15 i wasn't allowed to go with her to a concert until my 16th birthday which was just one month before i met steven and that was was that your mother's rule or was that no it was because of the law the like law. she would have taken me if the laws would have allowed me to go but because in, of the law in I, portland in portland Oregon. yes this uh, uh -huh. she she was going to concerts a lot, and she would take young girls with her, and uh, I was invited to go. At that age, I was too foolish to understand the danger that I was in. I just thought it was exciting. I knew that I idolized Aerosmith and Steven Tyler. I'd, I'd seen his picture on his album cover. I'd listened to the song Dream On, and when she told me that I could go to the Aerosmith concert, I thought, this is Fabulous. I wanted to go and I hoped that I would meet Stephen and when we met it was like my world just came to a stop and We just something happened between the two of us. We, I I went home with him No one asked where I was at my my home. I my supervision was just not there My mother allowed me to travel with him and within a few months. I was moved to Boston and living with Steven. Now, within a few short months of Julia meeting Steven Tyler, she actually moved to Boston to be with him, and he began the conversation about how he would need to get legal custody of her to be her legal guardian to allow her to move around state to state with him. So he was cognizant of the fact that what he was doing already was not really that good. A then 25-year-old man seeking legal guardianship of a 16-year-old... Um, 
Big yikes. And we've seen this time and time again with people with money, fame, and power. They use that to pull in fans and then do whatever they want with them. It's really a sick, sadistic game that these Hollywood elite people think is okay, but we all know that it's really not. And you were living in uh, Brookline on Beacon Street, is that correct? Uh, the first apartment we had was in on Beacon Street, but it wasn't the Brookline apartment. It was in, yeah, it was a different place, but it was a small little basement apartment. and. I, I moved there with Stephen, and we had been there for a short time, and he came to me and told me that he needed to become my legal guardian so that I could travel with him and tour. I didn't really understand what all of that meant. Yeah. Why would he do that? What, what, was it because you were that, at that point you were 16 years old, is that correct? Yes, I was barely 16. He wanted to take me on tour with him, and mm -hmm. he told me that it was illegal for me to cross state lines unless he was my guardian and I was his ward. I didn't think my mother would sign the papers, um, but he came to me very shortly after that and he had the papers signed. And I remember almost being devastated. I felt kind of abandoned. The fact that Julia's mother was just okay with this and let her just gallivant across the country with a 25 year old man in a rock band and you all know the reputation that rock bands had at the time and what they were doing um her mother is trash for that and i'm sorry i'm not gonna take that back i'm not gonna sugarcoat it julia holcomb's mom is garbage but now let's get into what's going on in 2023 with steven tyler and julia holcomb or julia missley if you will because there has been this lawsuit filed and there's an article on huffington post that i want to read uh you guys and catch you up to speed on what's really going on the article says woman sues aerosmith steven tyler alleging child sexual assault in 1970s and this was posted on december 30th of 2022 so i will actually link it in the description box of this video as well as the other sources for everything that I've put in this video if you would like to fact check or look any further into what I'm talking about in this video. The article then goes on to say, a woman who previously said Steven Tyler had an illicit sexual relationship with her when she was a teenager is now suing the Aerosmith frontman for sexual assault, sexual battery, and intentional affliction of emotional distress. And you guys, when I tell you if I were to get into what happened to this girl or this lady now rather back in the day, like, this video, like I could not even make this video. What she describes and what she says happened to her is truly one of the most horrific things I think that I've ever heard come out of someone's mouth. It's very, very scary and very, very deranged what happened to her at the like young age of 16. Like I cannot even fathom this going on with someone that I would know or someone that was in my personal life. I would literally lose my mind. This is terrible. The lawsuit brought by Julia Misley was filed Tuesday under a 2019 California law that gave adult victims of childhood sexual assault a three-year window to file lawsuits for decades-old instances of assault. Saturday is the deadline to file such claims. So basically what happened is there was this law passed in California that allowed people to bring up things from the past that they may not have been able to press charges on or file lawsuits with, and it gave them a window of opportunity to actually press charges or file lawsuits for any kind of like deviance that may have happened to them in the past. The 65-year-old Miss Lee, formerly known as Julia Holcomb, said in a statement that she wanted to seize a new opportunity to take legal action against those that abused me in my youth. The Associated Press does not name victims of sexual assault unless they publicly identify themselves. And I was truly shocked when I started researching all of this because there is a ton of video evidence and a ton of Julia actually speaking out and, and making an argument against Steven Tyler. Like, I knew about this, but I didn't know that she had spoken so much about it and just, it has fallen on deaf ears and I don't understand why. While the lawsuit doesn't name Tyler, Miss Lee identified him by name in the statement issued through the law firm Jeff Anderson and Associates. She has also recounted her experiences with Tyler in prior interviews and Tyler discussed her relationship with a teenage girl in two books, published in 2011 and 1997. So that right there lets you know just how bold Steven Tyler is, like, you talked about this in a book, dude, not once, but twice. And I'm really saddened by all of this because literally like my childhood was Aerosmith songs. 
The acknowledgement section of his memoir, Does the Noise in My Head Bother You, thanks to Julia Holcomb, which Miss Lee has said is a reference to her. Representatives for Tyler did not immediately return requests for comment Friday. The lawsuit alleges Tyler used his role, status, and power as a well-known musician and rock star to gain access to groom, manipulate, exploit, sexually assault, and Miss Lee over a period of three years. Some of the abuse occurred in Los Angeles County, the lawsuit said. As a result, she has suffered severe emotional injury as well as economic loss as the lawsuit said. And we all know why we always hear about California and the things that go on out there because it's the Hollywood elite doing what they do. They're just terrible people. The lawsuit says that Ms. Lee met Tyler in 1973 at one of his shows in Portland, Oregon and was later invited to Tyler's hotel room where she said... She told him she was 16 years old. Tyler would have been 25 or 26 at the time. It says he engaged in various acts of criminal sexual conduct against Miss Lee. I'm honestly repulsed by this. The fact that like this happened in 1973. And I know that there's going to be people in my comments saying it was a different time. I don't care if it was a different time. It was still wrong. It was wrong then. It's wrong now. It's just people are way more vocal about the things that happen these days because we have social media and people have some kind of like security on the internet in numbers and it's just gross that even her mother allowed this to happen to her like what kind of sicko allows this to happen to their child the lawsuit alleged that miss lee became pregnant in 1975 as a result of having sex with tyler and that he later coerced her into having an abortion and you guys that's what i'm talking about if you go and watch some of the videos that i have linked in the description box of this video about this and it's actually julia's own words you will be horrified mortified just completely shook and disgusted with what she says happened to her it it's truly just next level sickness. Tyler further horned Misley by publishing memoirs that detailed parts of their relationship without her knowledge or consent. Doing so subjected Misley to public attention and scrutiny, which re-traumatized her and made it harder for her to recover, the lawsuit said. And I can only imagine the grief and turmoil that this put her through because this is literally like a wound that he just reopened because... Why? He can. He's Steven Tyler. You know what I mean? It's the person in power always is doing whatever they can to try to get it on the person that they've hurt. And I have been on the other side of a similar situation, not like to this degree, obviously, but like when someone just stabs at you and cuts at you, like it's just reopening wounds that don't need to be reopened. And him putting her in this memoir or memoirs was really uncalled for. Like, you've done enough to her, Stephen. In Tyler's 2011 memoir, he mentions meeting an unnamed 16-year-old girlfriend-to-be. He wrote he almost took a teen bride and got her parents to sign over custody so he wouldn't get arrested when she went on tour with him out of state. So that right there lets you know that Stephen Tyler already knew that he was playing dangerous games. I hate that it's actually taken this long to get him into a court system to actually hold him accountable for what he did in the past. Like, there's no amount of records, there's no amount of clout or any amount of money that will ever make what Steven Tyler did to this person okay. And I think that it's time that he pays the piper. By including plaintiff's name in the acknowledgement, he left the readers and public without any doubt of plaintiff's identity. The lawsuit states adding that she was confronted with a picture of her own face on a tabloid cover at a grocery store after the book's publication. Like, can you imagine having all of this horrific, traumatic stuff happening to you and then you go into the store to buy groceries and you see your face beside Steven Tyler, the person that perpetrated all of this trauma? Trauma. Like, I get where she's coming from with this lawsuit, and I think that whatever number she is asking, she should get that plus some. Tyler's relationship with the teenage girl is also referenced by several people in Walk This Way, a 1997 autobiography of Aerosmith in the oral history format. The teen is given the pseudonym Diana Hall and at one point is described as pregnant. Tyler said he was thinking about marrying her, referenced abortions, and called it a tricky situation all around. Well, no, it looks like what the tricky situation is going to be is him in court trying to defend himself in a decades old case where literally there's so much evidence against him. Julia has spoken ad nauseum about this and the fact that it's taken her all the way to 2022 to get to a point where she's able to like go after him legally is sickening. The lawsuit seeks monetary compensation of an unspecified amount. Give it to her. Give it to her. Give her every penny plus some that she asked for because she deserves it. Like, obviously, I couldn't be on the jury for this for many different reasons because I'm biased. But I really hope that the jury hears her out and I hope that the jury awards her 
whatever she asked for. Because it's very clear that when a 25 year old man asked for legal guardianship of a 16 year old, what is going on? And then the fact that there was a whole abortion after, like, and what happened during that is so traumatizing. And the fact that she's had to live with this for so many years and deal with this and have people mocking her, because there have been people that still to this day mock her about the situation and say that she only wants fame, money, and clout. Like, we're past that. Like, she's damn near going on 70 years old. Give her her money because she's suffered enough and let her go on about her merry fucking way because Steven Tyler needs to pay for what he has done to her. But you guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Did you know about this? Did you know everything that Steven Tyler has done that I've talked about in this video? Because this is like decades old at this point. And we all know how groupies and all the like rock band stuff of the 80s happened. And we know how they were doing things that they really had no business. I really think that Steven Tyler is going to be one of just a few that are going to be called out. I think that there is security in numbers. And when one person comes forward, other people tend to come forward. So I think it'll be really interesting to see what happens with these rock stars from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, because it's a domino effect. And I'm sure that there'll be more people come out. But you guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Did you know any of this? Had you heard about any of this? What do you think is going to happen? Let me know your opinions, good, bad, or indifferent, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.